Hello everybody and welcome back to the Great Maine Bird Quest. It is a beautiful spring day and to celebrate that we're going to talk about winter birds. <laughs> so yeah it's been uh, what like a month now or something since the last video and I'm up to I believe the number is 172 species. Um, I have found a few new birds since the last video which is really cool um, especially for the winter because I'd already found most of the winter birds. So yeah, it was pretty exciting to add a couple more to the list. Um, I also got some better pictures of a bunch of other birds, which is always good, and just generally had a good time birding. So uh, today I'm down here at Sears Island. I'm looking for a Pacific loon that's been hanging around. Unfortunately, it's not in its breeding plumage, which would be really awesome but it would still be cool to see that because I've never seen one before. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of been hanging out on this fairly big stretch of coast, so I might not be in the right place, but we'll see. But while I look for that, I figure I'll catch you guys up on some of those sightings I had over the winter. So yeah, take a look. Unlike the past few winters, this winter was actually a pretty decent one in terms of snow. We had a bunch of nice snowstorms that stuck around without any rain afterwards to turn the snow into an icy, sleety mess. This gave me the opportunity to do a lot of hiking and enjoy the landscape covered in a really nice fluffy layer of snow. We also had a couple of really cold mornings, which create this phenomenon called sea smoke, which is where mist rises off the surface of the ocean because the water is so much warmer than the surrounding air. On this particular morning, it was about negative 14 degrees Fahrenheit, and of course, I managed to get a couple of pictures of birds in these frigid conditions. I really enjoy these two pictures of some black scoters in the sea smoke because to me it really captures the struggle that these birds have to endure all winter long as they battle the harsh conditions of the coast. One of my favorite days of birding actually came about two weeks before that. I had gone down to Acadia National Park for a little bit of sunrise photography and I came across this little scene where the tracks of a grouse cross over tracks from a bobcat. Unfortunately, I didn't find either the grouse or the bobcat, but it did inspire me to take a quick little walk through the woods to see if I could find any other birds. Because this was a last minute, unplanned decision, I ended up taking this walk with only my camera and wildlife lens. I didn't bring any of my video gear or even my tripod, which of course meant that I found a lot of stuff I wish I could have recorded. The first thing I found was a group of juncos foraging for food right next to the water where there was some nice sandy backgrounds as well as a really cool pure white snowy background. In this next image you can even see a tiny little insect that this junco snapped up right after I took this photo. Another highlight of the morning was finding this sharp shinned hawk perched on a tree right next to the trail. Sharp shinned hawks and cooper's hawks are really hard to tell apart, but thanks to the length of the tail feathers and the generally smaller head, I feel somewhat confident in saying this is a sharp shinned hawk. My favorite part of the morning, however, was seeing a small flock of pine grosbeaks foraging for food in the trees. Not only was this a new species for the bird quest, it was also the first time I'd seen them in real life, so I was pretty excited to get a decent shot of them. As I mentioned before, this winter was a pretty good one for snow, so one of my goals was to get pictures of birds in the snow. So one snowy morning, I took a trip down to the coast, surprise, surprise, and was rewarded with a nice variety of swimming seabirds. From one spot on the coast, I was able to watch a group that contained buffleheads, red-breasted mergansers, and common loons all just hanging out as the heavy snow fell and built up on their backs. 
pretty soon these loons will be making their way inland back to their breeding ponds, but it was pretty cool to see them all hanging out in these big groups right offshore. The highlight of this day came a little bit later, when I found myself on some snow-covered rocks looking for a harlequin duck. I did remember to bring all my video gear this time, so I'll let a very excited me explain what happened. Alright, well, I found a harlequin duck. I actually wasn't really expecting to, but I was checking out this little bit of coastline here, and I was actually walking back up into the woods, and then I looked back one last time and just saw this little duck that looked a little bit too colorful to be all the usual suspects kind of floating around the coast. So right now it's diving in and out of these crashing waves over here and I feel like harlequin ducks are kind of like the daredevils of the duck world because they like to hang out like right where the waves are crashing, diving down, getting uh, whatever it is they eat <laughs> right out of the intertidal zone there or the just below the low tide line. And it's just, they'll just watch these huge waves coming right at them, and then at the last second they'll dive underneath. So yeah, it's pretty cool to watch. So I'm definitely going to be spending a little while here watching him until he swims off in, a, in search of other pastures. <laughs> yeah, super cool find. Harlequin ducks are one of my favorite ducks just because they're so cool looking. I've seen them in a couple different places. Um, the first time I saw them was actually in Alaska which is uh, one of the places they breed. They like to breed up in the, the tundra and the boreal forest and sort of near raging rivers, which is, I guess, kind of why they like the crashing waves here. But yeah, it's super cool to see them here, too. Harlequin ducks eat marine invertebrates like crabs, mussels, barnacles, and snails. However, their habit for hunting for food in the crashing waves is pretty hard on their bodies. Museum specimens and x-rays show that most adult harlequin ducks are living with broken bones. If this one had any broken bones, he definitely wasn't letting them slow him down as he dived under wave after wave, searching for food.
As always, I really enjoyed watching this harlequin duck diving around in the waves. And when I was done watching him, I even got a couple of sightings of a black guillemot and a black scoter swimming by. A couple weeks later we had another snowstorm which gave me another opportunity to photograph some birds in the snow. This time I stayed right in my backyard to photograph some of my local birds. I'd been seeing this tree sparrow in my backyard off and on all winter and it was pretty cool to capture him with the tiny little snowflakes clinging to his feathers. There were also plenty of appearances from the chickadees who have been coming to my feeder all year round. There was also a male cardinal hanging around who looked extra vibrant against the white snow. Unfortunately, this was a very wet snow, and before I could get any good pictures of any of these birds, my gloves and pants started soaking through, so I decided to call it a day and go inside and have some hot chocolate. It seems like a lot of my good winter birding days happened down on the coast, and this day was no exception. I had gone down on a reasonably warm day just to see what I could find, and came across this group of purple sandpipers foraging for food on the rocks. Pretty soon they'll be heading back north to their breeding grounds in the tundras of the high arctic, so it's always fun to spend some time with these winter visitors. The day concluded with some decent looks at some offshore eiders, as well as some long-tailed ducks, red-breasted mergansers, and even a couple of crossbills hanging out high up in a tree. Even though I saw a lot of pretty cool birds this winter, there was one species in particular that I was really excited to finally see. This flock of bohemian waxwings was hanging around the University of Maine campus, so it was probably one of my easiest sightings of the winter. All I had to do was park my car and get out, and there they were, hanging out in some fruit trees. They look really similar to cedar waxwings, but you can tell them apart by looking at their bellies and the underside of their tail. Cedar waxwings have a yellowish belly and white under the tail, whereas the bohemian waxwings have a grayish belly and that really nice reddish color under the tail. A little fun fact about waxwings is that they can sometimes become intoxicated if they eat too much fruit that has started to ferment and produce alcohol. With that fun little fact, we are now caught up with the winter birds, so it's time to get back to the search for the loon. Alright, so far I've been fooled by a couple of common loons and some buffleheads. So the main difference between the Pacific loons and the common loons, at least in their winter plumage, is the common loon or the Pacific loons apparently have a little, slightly smaller bill that they hold more horizontally, and they also have a slight chin strap, uh, like a little black chin strap marking that goes kind of under their chin, which can be kind of hard to see, but based on some of the sightings I've seen, it isn't too bad. So I just have to keep checking out every potentially loon-shaped object I see floating in the water out here, and hopefully I'll get lucky and find that Pacific loon. Fingers crossed.
All right, well, I haven't had any luck with the Pacific loon yet, but I have added another species to the list. Uh, way off in the distance, I saw either a greater or a lesser scop. There are actually three of them. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not really sure what the differences are between them. Um, and I can't really tell from my pictures. Hopefully I'll be able to figure it out when I get back to the computer and I'll be able to pop it up here. But in the meantime, it's going down as scop species. But yeah, I'm going to walk up the coast a little bit, see if I can get a little bit closer. But they have these very obvious white bands around the base of their bill, which I'm pretty sure uh, is pretty unique to them. So I don't think there's anything else that it could be. But let's see if we can get a little bit closer. After watching this footage back in my office, I think these are female greater scops. The main difference between greater and lesser scops is the shape of the head. Greater scops have a rounder head, whereas lesser scops have a little bit of a point and then a flat section on the back. Although, the one in the front does seem to have a little bit of that point, so if anybody with more experience thinks that these are two graders and one lesser, let me know in the comments. Well, I did manage to get a little bit closer. Not close enough to get any really awesome pictures, but got some better pictures that I can hopefully use to try to identify what kind of scops these are. But yeah, that's a pretty cool sighting. Um, wasn't expecting to see those down here, even though I guess I should have been. They've been sighted around here, I think, fairly frequently. But yeah, it's always nice to see a new species. Um, that's species number 174, if I didn't say that already. But yeah, I'm gonna head back down the coast where I came from and see if maybe I can find that Pacific loon. Today's feeling like a good day, so maybe I'll get lucky. So let's head back down and get a little more birding in before the sun goes down and uh, it gets really dark out. Unfortunately, there were no more loons in sight, so I turned into the forest to follow the trail back to my car. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I never did find that Pacific loon, unfortunately, but it was still really cool seeing the scops. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before, so it's always good seeing a species for the first time, and especially being able to get decent photos of them. Obviously, I wish the photos were better, but that's kind of the point of this quest, is just to see uh, how many birds I can find and just continuously work on getting better pictures of them. So yeah. Um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.